OK, so for this part then, we've got to find the maximum value of 2 sine theta minus 1.5 cos theta. And we saw that this was identical to r sine theta minus alpha, where r was the 2.5 and alpha was the 0.64 radians. Now, finding the maximum value of this then is very easy when you've got it expressed in this form because it turns out to always be the r value, in this case 2.5. So the answer is that the maximum value is 2.5. But why? Okay, let me explain why. It's easier seen from the graph, okay, trying to graph this function. If we just draw our axis, okay, something like this, we've got y and theta, and we were to go back and look at the graph of sine theta. Sine theta, should remember then, is a standard graph looking something like this, okay, going between the 1 here and minus 1 down here. And it peaks at 90 degrees, or in radians, that's pi upon 2, and crosses here at 180 degrees, or pi radians, bottoms out at 270 degrees, or 3 pi upon 2 radians, and returns back to 0 here at 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. So that's the graph then, let's have a key up here, that's the graph then of y equals sine theta. Now, if we look at sine of theta minus 0 0.64350 odd radians, then what that does to this graph, if we replace the theta with theta minus 0 0.64 odd radians, it translates this graph by 0.64 radians to the right. So you're going to get a new graph looking something like this, okay? like that, OK? So this graph here, we'll just do a little dotted line there, this is the graph then of y equals the sine of theta minus 0.64, I'll just go 64 odd radians, OK? Now, once we've got that graph, we multiply this by 2.5 and that has the effect of stretching this blue graph now by a factor of 2.5. With these points on the, what would normally be the x-axis, but the theta axis here, they stay invariant. So we're going to get a graph going something like this. It's not drawn to scale, but just hopefully gives you an idea. Okay, it comes down through there, bottoms out down here, and then back up through that value there. So, this point, it used to be at 1, has now been stretched out by a scale factor of 2.5. So, hopefully you can see that this value up here is just going to be at 2.5. And it's going to bottom out here at minus 2.5. Minus 2.5. Let's just extend that y-axis there, okay? Just down a bit. OK, so that is why the maximum value is 2.5. And if they'd asked you for the minimum value, it would have been minus 2.5. So we'll just put that in then. So the max value equals 2.5. Now in part 2, they ask us to find out the value that theta would be that gives us this maximum value. Well, you can either do it just simply from the graph, or you can see that what we need to have here is a value of pi upon 2, because when you do the sine of pi upon 2, you get your maximum, which used to be 1. Okay, So we get our max when the value in here, that angle, theta minus 0 0.5, 64350 and so on equals pi upon 2 radians. So if you add the 0 0.64350 you're going to get pi upon 2 
plus the 0 0.64350 and so on and you could see that that's going to be the case where it peaks here because it's just above this blue graph where it peaks which was the red graph shunted to the right by 0 0.64350 radians there you go up there okay so either way you can do it from a graphical point of view or making this equal pi upon 2 radians well anyway if you work that out what you get turns out to be 2.21429 and so on and if we give this say to two decimal places theta is going to be 2.21 radians so you can either write the word radians in or you could even use just a little letter c it's up to you okay so that's 2dp